Good morning. Welcome to your Sunday service. Um, here we are for Mother's Day. It's a special day, and I might as well start out with it right from the beginning before we even pray. If you, uh, you're supposed to start laughing right now, right? You know what I'm going to say. If your wife or mother, I know you can't get to everybody, but whoever's with you is preparing their own meal and feeding you, shame on you. You should have done something in advance and had it ready so that she didn't have to work today. This is her special day. She's done a lot of work and she deserves the entire day off. That means dishwashing and everything else. Yes, I'm adding a lot extra because you were your home and you got to do it. Okay? Take care of mom. She deserves it. So let's start with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our time together. We do thank you for our church family. We thank you for the blessings, uh, Lord, that you give to us of our mothers. And in, in my case and many others, my wonderful wife and her godliness. And, and Lord, uh, the, the blessing that we have in having uh, not just these mothers who love the Lord, but uh, Lord, in, in other cases as well, uh, Lord, the, the struggle that some have had to go through where mom doesn't know the Lord at all. Lord, I pray that you would just bless each and every home, help the message to ring true today, the Holy Spirit to be able to touch the areas he wants to touch, and Lord, in, in the areas where uh, things are going very well, I pray that you would also stretch us into what the Holy Spirit would have us to learn and to know as well. And I thank you for our time together. I pray that we worship you on this Mother's Day, a special day, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's start with singing number 450, A Child of the King. Number 450, A Child of the King. that I shame all the men 
and, and constantly keep telling them that they need to take care of mom, that they should not be going home to a meal she prepared yesterday just so she wouldn't have to do it today, and uh, that, that there are things and ways in order for you to feed mom so that uh, she wouldn't have to do it. Of course, it's a little harder right now uh, with what's going on in our world and the inability for people to get out, go out, or whatever else, but I'm just encouraging folks um, that, uh, that they should make sure that they're honoring mother today because she deserves it. She worked so hard. I don't know about you, but in, in my home, uh, my wife uh, seems to be up before everybody and working all day long and constantly cleaning and constantly cooking and constantly doing all kinds of stuff along with all the other jobs. And uh, she deserves much greater praise than she gets. And I think that that's the way we should treat uh, our wives in every household and in every home. So please honor them today. And uh, if you're, you're new to us, um, please laugh along as I uh, shame the husbands into doing what they're supposed to do and take care of it. Most of them do it anyway. But it's just a tradition, and uh, the folks have always enjoyed that. So just explain that to you, okay? Let's sing number 553. 553, Lord bless our home. We're going to sing together, Lord bless our home. This is probably a newer hymn, so those of you who don't have hymn books, you might not know this one. We'll try to get the words to you, but we'll see how that goes. Um, but uh, Lord bless our home. This is one of Ron Hamilton's uh, songs.
Thank you, Ariana. My faith has found a resting place. What a beautiful song. A good old-fashioned hymn as well. So uh, today, we're not going to take the next step in the psalm passage that we would normally do, just because it's Mother's Day, and I'd like to, to do some kind of uh, special service for it for Mom. Uh, I will tell you that Dad's going to be included a little bit here today, not because we're trying to, to take away from Mom, but because the verse is obviously includes Dad as a part of the setup. And so uh, we're, we're going to talk about him as well. And uh, the theme of our, our day today is don't chase away mama. Don't chase her away. Now, I, I want to talk to you about some things. First of all, um, on a personal note, um, I appreciate what my mother has done and uh, who she's been over the years and uh, how special she is. But I also recognize that some of you, your mother's no longer around. And so you, you're like, this is... Uh, a day that you're, you're missing something special and you feel quite burdened about it, and I understand all that. But I believe there's ways that you can apply what we're going to talk about today uh, to your life and to the lives that you have, relationships you have, particularly with you and your children, if you happen to be the older individual at this moment. And so uh, I want you to remind, remember that too. But I'd also like to tell you that I've seen a lot of folks within our church and I can't divulge to you who and what and what they've been through, but there have been people who, at, at the hands of their mother, uh, at, 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 at her decisions, have drastically harmed them with what they've allowed and permitted in the home. Whether it's a, abuse in, in a physical sense or in other ways or various different ways. And yet the forgiveness I've seen in those individuals has been massive. Uh, that's the kind of thing that we're talking about today, is the idea of don't chase mama away. Remember to keep her close. Remember to value her, regardless if she's made mistakes. Now, we're not saying, hey, uh, you know, throw yourself to the lions and that kind of thing. We're not doing that. But what we are talking about is work on having an, an appropriate, safe relationship with your mother. Again, there are some within our midst that there are great hurts from the past. And I encourage you to take those to the Lord, to find the right balance to where you protect you and, and your family, but also to make sure that we don't run mama off, that we allow her to have a part in our home. I believe that this all has to do with uh, one of the Lord's greatest commandments. Uh, he calls it, uh, in the top ten commandments, he calls it the honor of thy father and mother, Right? Um, we find this in Exodus chapter 20, verse 12, in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 16, in Matthew chapter 15, verse 6, in Matthew chapter 19, verse 19, in uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 10, in Luke chapter 18, verse 20. And no, those are all not uh, copycat setups there. There are a bunch of different uh, times that God is talking about this. But what I want you to understand is this has been an emphasis even before Christ in the law and then when Christ came. I think it's something that we need to remember to honor our father and our mother. And no, parents are not perfect. They've not made all the exact right decisions and they've not always done what they should have done. But I want you to understand that your responsibility as a child, commanded by God, is not only to obey them when you're younger, but when you're older, honor them. Cherish them. Hold them in high regard. And again, I get it that some of you have been massively hurt through various different ways and reasons by your parents. But I encourage you, find a way to heal at least part of that relationship so that you and your parents can have what God deems correct in both. Okay? So let's, without further ado, get into our text, which is Proverbs chapter 19, verse 26. 19, verse 26. This is not going to be an extra long message, and we're going to be after this exact thing, the honor of the Lord. The first thing is uh, the, the commandment applied in the way we treat our parents. The commandment applied in the way we treat our parents. Okay, so look at chapter 19, verse 26, and here's what it says. He that wasted his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach. He that wasteth his father and 
chaseth away his mother, is a son that causes shame and bringeth reproach. So what does this mean, wasting your father? Well, my first point would be don't waste your father. And when I look at the word waste there, uh, in, the, in the original Hebrew, it means deal violently with, to spoil, um, uh, to put in a state of ruin, that kind of thing. In the Arabic language, the same word is used, and it means to stop up, obstruct, arrest, make firm. In the Ethiopic uh, language, it means to expel. So you can see a general theme here in the idea. In other words, it carries the idea of maltreating or mistreating your father. And it's the idea of, of ravaging his, his um, encouragement to you and uh, maybe even his instruction to you and maybe even his rebukes. And, and we need to, to not waste our father. Um, the Bible tells us throughout Proverbs that wisdom is learning to listen. In fact, the very next verse afterwards tells you, Cease my son to hear the instruction that causes thee to err in the words of knowledge. It tells us, make sure we're listening to the right things, right? And so I, I want to encourage you, first of all, don't waste your father. Don't mistreat him. Value him. I have noticed many people that treat their parents as if they're, they're fools. They're they're um, something to be mocked and made fun of. Now, I'm not saying you can't have fun, you can't enjoy things. I tease my dad all the time. You know my relationship, you've seen it. Okay? But, but I think we need to be very careful in, in how we treat their, their guidance, their understanding, their respect. Even if they're not taking all things into account and not caring about exactly how we feel or think or what, what we're going through. We need to not waste our father. There are many times that I wish that I'd listened to my dad a little bit more thoroughly. And I've tried to implement that in the way that I've dealt with my own children by demanding a little stronger some of the things my father used to say to me that I didn't do so hot at listening to him on. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? And so I think as, as we grow older, we learn to cherish more the advice of our father. Because there's a lot of wisdom there. You say, but pastor, my dad, he's a, he's a royal, he's, he's a pain. I, I can't stand being around him. I understand. But he's, he's abused me. I understand. And I'm not trying to tell you to open up all these things and, and get back into all the relationships. What I am telling you is, though, don't waste what God's given you. Okay? Try the best you can to have the acceptable to the right level, appropriate relationship, and value what you can. Don't waste it. Don't waste it. We only have one lifetime. And, and at least in those situations, we can look at it and say we want that individual to come to Christ. We want to see a change in their life. We want to see things go in a different direction. Don't waste it. But then the second part, which is our theme for today, is, is don't chase away your mother. Okay? And it, it's very interesting that the words are used here that it says, and chaseth away his mother. He that wastes his father and chaseth away his mother. Don't chase away your mother. Now, when I look up this word chase here, it means go through or flee. Uh, it's almost like, um, you know, sometimes you're in the kitchen and there's a lot of you in the kitchen and, and instead of you valuing somebody else and backing off to the side and letting that individual through, you just go right through them, right? You bump them, you knock them into things. Uh, it, it's that kind of idea of chasing them away, bumping them off, getting rid of them, saying, get out of here. I don't want your advice. I don't want to talk to you about that. I don't want you to be a part of this. And, and I think we need to be careful. It carries with it the idea of going away from or withdrawing from or fleeing. There are relationships that, that I have noticed. I've told you that I, I know some people that have been drastically hurt by their mother, drastically hurt by their father, who are attempting in every way they can to have the right kind of godly relationship and love with that individual with the proper protections in place and caring about them, especially as they get into their older years. And in some cases with very drastic uh, medical issues that cause and need extra love and attention. And they don't say, ah, we're not going to do that because mom did this or dad did that. And I, I just want to encourage you, don't chase away. Value. Don't knock away. Don't say, 
get out of the way. Don't say, this is what I'm going to do. Some of you young people, you teenagers, you know, your, your parents are trying to encourage you to think right. And, and again, I'm not saying they're going to do everything perfectly because they won't. I sure don't. Okay, but what they're trying to do is they're trying to help you and mold you and encourage you. And even in those mistakes, they love you and they care about you. And, and so you need to value, not bump away and say you're only caring about yourself, even if it appears that that is all they care about. You need to work towards the idea of not wasting your father and not trying to bump off mom, but instead caring about them. These are all parts of applying the commandment to honor your father and your mother. There are some of you who maybe haven't talked to your parents, your mother, in years. And I'm not talking those whose mother has passed away. I'm talking your mother's still alive and you haven't had a very good relationship in a long time. Well, maybe you ought to pray and ask God to help you figure out to what level and how you ought to repair that. Because you don't want to bump her off. You don't want to have her lost from these very special things. Because she spent a long time taking care of you. She's not perfect. But she did love you. And so, don't waste your father. Don't chase away your mother. The last part is, similar to the commandment where God tells us that, that your days may be long on the earth and those type of things. Um, well, here we are in this particular um, uh, application of it. And we see the commandment applied to the punishment as well. And, and so at the end of verse 26, you see, is a son that causeth shame. Uh, this idea word here of shame kind of means disappointment or disappointment. Um, your mother loves to brag about her children. I, I've never met a mother that doesn't brag in some fashion or another about what their children or grandchildren have done or are doing or accomplishing or what awards they get or what they're involved in. But when we shame our parents because we bump them off, we waste what they're doing for us, we don't care. Even if they have done things terrible to us, we bring shame. Now listen to what I'm trying to tell you here. Those of you that my heart goes out to because you've never had the good relationship that I've had with my mother and with my wife and her parenting of, of, of the children that we have together, Folks, I want to tell you something. I feel for you. But I want to tell you this. God wants you to be a person that even in the midst of sin and wrong of others brings praise and honor to your parents. Which means, again, not that we take down all the walls and make ourselves vulnerable to the wrong things and get ourselves into a big problem trouble, where, where in some of your cases your parents have stolen from you and in other cases they've taken advantage of you and in other cases they've thoroughly abused you in many different ways. I get it. But folks, I'm begging you. See that what your job is is to draw people to God. And even if your parents don't have a lot of contact with you because of their sins and their struggles and their problems, they should be able to brag about you. Because you've at least given them a part of that. You didn't bump them off. Do you understand what we're trying to tell you? I hope so. And so the first part is don't cause shame. The second part of this uh, commandment applied is at the end of verse 26, and it says, and bringeth reproach. Now this is very interesting to me because we get the idea of don't cause shame, but when we, when we look at bring uh, reproach, it, this is it, it hard because normally when you talk about reproach, you, you're look, uh, the idea of people scorning or looking at it in a way of, of, oh boy, there's that person and that kind of thing, right? Um, but this particular word reproach here in, in the Old Testament, it actually means to dig. It, it's used for uh, when people dig a well. In other words, they're looking for water. It, it carries the idea of pawing the ground, looking carefully about, trying to find something that is needed. 
Again, digging a well. Trying to find something that is needed. I think of the old western where the horse saves the fella who can't find any water anywhere and the horse is so smart out in the desert that he knows just where to dig. And then water comes up. Okay? I think of a man who is just thirsting for a drink. Who can't find that refreshing thing that was supposed to be there. And again, I understand the failures. I understand the burdens that that puts on children. And I understand how much hurt is there. But I want to encourage you, as you look at this entire thing today, whether you're a person who's had a great relationship with your parents and you need to just get back to what a special time it is and, and call mom and spend some extra time with her on the phone today, but value her. Don't waste your father's instruction and value mom. Don't bump her off. Don't chase her away. But include her. Let her be a part. And, and with that in mind, give her the ability to do what moms love to do, which is to brag about what their children are doing. And why don't you make it to where they're bragging about what you're doing for the Lord. And in that same time, then you bring to them, not a reproach, but the ability to find what they're really looking for. Something different, maybe in some cases, even different from themselves. You see, I think that's what God's called all of us to do. When he says, honor your father and mother. By the way, he does not tell us to honor our father and our mother because they've earned it or because they deserve it. He tells us, honor them. And so I submit to you, apply the commandment. Don't waste your father. Don't chase away your mother. Value them. Be something that is not a disappointment, but instead something they can brag about and be proud of. And at the same time, that when they're looking and searching around for that value, they see it in you. That's what God wants out of all of us. And so, I encourage you, live up to that, okay? Now, as we're going to close our service here in a few moments, I'd first like to ask you, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure that you'd go to heaven? Maybe some of the struggle that you're having with this is that you don't have a relationship with God and you've never met the Heavenly Father who shows forgiveness and kindness and love when others maybe have failed at that. And so what I encourage you to do is to go right now to Jesus, to God the Father, and allow Him to save you through the death, burial, and resurrection of His Son, Jesus Christ. It's kind of like this. You would tell Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner and that I cannot save myself. I believe that you, as God's Son, came to this earth, died for me, took my place, and paid my penalty. And I ask you to come into my heart and save me from my sins today. And, and in Jesus' name, amen. Friend, if you prayed that, I want you to know that the Lord will save you. He promises that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I believe the rest of us need to pray that we'll have that right kind of attitude and appreciation and honor for our parents. As we do this, uh, I'd like to end our, our service today. Uh, normally, I, I sing at the end by myself or maybe with the kids playing the instrument. But today, uh, Ariane's going to come and sing with me a song that you might think doesn't fit so well. But we're going to sing uh, an uh, older new song called Quiet, Please. And we're doing so with the idea of uh, just, you know, pretty much going with our, our theme here. Maybe sometimes... In our relationships with mom, we, we need to just back down and be a little bit more quiet and show the honor and respect, even if they're not perfect or failing at what they're supposed to do. Obviously, it can apply to other relationships too. Our 
so much. She's done so much. And Lord, I pray that hearts would be touched in a special way and that God would be glorified in the, the relationships that are repaired and the revival that happens not only in the heart with the Lord, but between those that God has given us that we ought to love. And I thank you for each and every one of our mothers. I pray that you bless them. Uh, keep us all safe as we continue to wait for the time when we can meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. Hope you enjoyed today's Mother's Day message, and uh, we'll look forward to sending out another message to you on Wednesday night. And until then, stay safe. Bye.